You should never correct your pastor. You should never give them suggestion on how they can improve in the ministry because rebuke not an elder, right? You will hear people go as far as saying, instead of disclosing directly to the leader what exactly they're doing wrong and how it can be improved, you should relay the information to another leader and they will speak with that leader, given that their rank is high enough to rebuke such a person. Is this really what the scripture says? In response to this, I'll approach the verse from two angles, linguistically, and contextual. Using linguistics, the verse says, rebuke not an elder. Throughout the New Testament, when you see the word rebuke, majority of the time the word being used is epitimao. It is the word that we generally translate as rebuke. So for example, the first occurrence of the word in the New Testament is from Matthew 8:26, where the disciples of Jesus were afraid in the boat, being caught in a storm. It says that Jesus arose and epitimao the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. We see the word in the altercation between Peter and Jesus in Matthew 16, 22, where Peter epitimao Jesus, telling him that he shouldn't give up his life to the Romans. And in turn, Jesus epitimao Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan. The word is even used in the dispute between Satan and Michael in the book of Jude. Not wanting to bring a railing accusation against the devil, Michael said, The Lord epitimao you. This is the word that is generally translated as rebuke when reading the New Testament. On the contrary, the word for rebuke in 1 Timothy 5.1 is epipliso. This word is what we call a hapox legomenon. It occurs only once in the entire Bible. Because of this, it's a bit more difficult to know what the word means since it's only used in this verse. We can however make an inference based on the constituent parts that make up the word. Epi meaning upon on or at, and pleso meaning strike or smite. Therefore, epipleso literally means to strike upon someone or something. Figuratively, it would mean to chastise with words or speak harshly to. The scripture is therefore saying that you should not speak harshly to an elder. It's not saying that you shouldn't correct them. If that's not convincing, then let's approach it contextually. The text reads, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father and the younger men as brethren, and the elder women as mothers, and the younger as sisters, with all purity. Remember that the letter is from Paul to Timothy. Timothy would have been a servant in the church of Ephesus doing the work of an evangelist. The traditional view holds the notion that there is a hierarchical structure in the church where some believers are greater than some. I do not hold to that traditional view. I believe that we are all one in Christ and members of his body. It simply means that we are all equal being Christians, but serving different roles. If you focus on what is being said to Timothy, you will notice the family theme being used. We are God's household, and as such, Timothy is encouraged to treat the younger women as sisters, the younger men as brothers, the elder women as mothers, the elder men as fathers. Based on the structure of the verse, the first phrase should be complemented with each successive dependent clause. Rebuke not an elder but entreat him as a father. Rebuke not a younger man, but entreat him as a brother. Rebuke not an elder woman, but entreat her as a mother. Rebuke not a younger woman, but entreat her as a sister, with all purity. We being Christians are a part of God's family. Paul is encouraging Timothy to treat each person as such, that the love of God may be made manifest through the church. To bring home the point, the word elder used in this verse is presbyterus. It is where we get the word presbyter from. It generally means an old person, but in the epistles, it frequently refers to the leaders in the church. This is understandably why the verse is frequently misinterpreted. The correlation of the word exists because leaders were normally appointed in their old age. They were considered to have more wisdom than the younger people, having serving God longer. This could be the reason why Paul said, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. Probably Timothy, being a young person, was looked down by the elders in the church, but that's a discussion for another day. In the meantime, tell me what you think about this scripture. Can we give our pastors and leaders constructive criticism, or should we keep it to ourselves and pray that God talks to them for us? Leave your response in the comments below, and thank you for listening.